Now, that's not our everyday motherboard uh, because I see it as an apology, MSI's apology. Their early X570 powered motherboards were so poorly designed. I mean, watch the reviews I made about the MSI X570 Edge and Carbon. I still have nightmares of those motherboards. And um, MSI is trying to redeem itself with a Mag X570 Tomahawk. And frankly talking, it works. What should be a rather good but not too good budget gamer is one of the best X570 boards I have seen so far, surprisingly. And I am excited. Truth is, I am super excited about it. You see all this, all this, all that is pure and distill excitement. So the X570 series has been a torture to MSI. And like I said, their early motherboards had one similar fundamental problem. The, the PCB was not adequate to PCIe 4.0 and the VRM who came with it. So we were experiencing lava, lava level temperatures on those boards, making it somewhat unreliable and not very durable. But then in the middle of the X570 season, they decided to delay any further release and reworked their manufacturing process. And the first result gave us the X570 Unify, one of the best X570 motherboards I have had put my hands on. But it kept holding off on its tomahawk and nearly a year after the very first X570 motherboard came onto the market, finally MSI released its long-awaited MAG X570 tomahawk. And my oh my does this work. The Tomahawk is one of the best overclockers competing on the market and paradoxically one of the most affordable as well. To the point that I seriously doubt MSI is making any money on this board. Possibly they are even selling this board at a loss to salvage their X570 lineup. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a six PCB layered ATX motherboard and right there having six layers means a perfect PCIe 4.0 support, stronger signal isolation, better VRM heat dissipation. And compared to uh, the earlier MSI X570 boards, it's definitely a major improvement and probably where MSI decided to focus its redesign efforts on the Tomahawk. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting first, second, third and fourth generation of Ryzen CPU. Note that the PCIe 4.0 abilities of our boards will only be unlocked with the current third and incoming fourth generation Ryzen CPUs, which is a big deal since PCIe 4.0 doubles your motherboard available bandwidth and that will obviously give an immediate performance boost. VRM wise, well, that's where the MSI X570 Tomahawk makes no sense to our benefits, obviously. We have one of the best VRM configuration available on the X570 series, period. We have 1460 amps power stages backstopped by doublers providing 12 CPU centric direct phases. That is 720 amps to not only run but overclocked uh, any of the processor you can throw at it, even a 16 physical core. And the fact that it is direct faces give that overclocking agility that all overclocker enthusiasts is craving for. And obviously having 60 amps power stages is gloriously powerful, but having 720 amps spread over this mini power stages result in a surprisingly low heat footprint. Furthermore, we have this massive single heat shield cover design, which was introduced on the glorious and much more expensive MSI X570 Unify. Now from power stages to back IO, there is nothing here but condensed steel, the all topped by this never ending radiating roof. No RGB, just pure power utility and I absolutely love it. Additionally, both of our heat shields have double thermo padded contact design to provide individual heat dissipation for both artichokes and power stages. Both these features with a 6 PCB layer gives us one of the most heat efficient VRM available uh, on the market today. Obviously, this is what MSI needed to get right in order to make this board a CPU screamer. So huge engineering kudos to MSI for this. Memory wise, the Mag X570 Tomahawk supports up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to a very fast 4.6 gigahertz. But good luck finding any sticks who's gonna go at 4.6 gigahertz today anyways. But most importantly, this motherboard will be able to uh, 
go at higher clocks such as 4 4.2 gigahertz without too much problem i've overclocked up to 4 uh, 1 3 3 megahertz and didn't see any problem on the first try so that's what you want to see on this kind of board at that price range staying in the memory we have two m.2 solid state drive sticks which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second but couple our board with a ryzen 3000 processor or above and our board can now support pcie 4.0 m.2 solid state drive sticks with data swaps going up to an amazing 64 gigabit per second obviously an immediate performance gain and one of the biggest benefits of running a pcie 4.0 enabled cpu on this board in both cases our m.2 solid state drive sticks get really hot really quickly fortunately we have this beautiful long and thick hit things which do an amazing job at keeping our sticks from thermo throttling. A little word on our chipset. Our X570 chipset is the only mainstream PCIe 4.0 enabled chipset today on the market and that means obviously double the bandwidth on our PCIe lanes and all of the components which are PCIe 4.0 enabled. That is great but on the downside it also means double uh, the heat signature. It goes all the way to 11 watt of heat, which is quite a lot for a chipset, hence uh, an active cooling solution on all X570 powered motherboard. And here MSI did a great job at providing a thick, big heatsink with lots of radiating surface, which I do suspect would have done a great job at radiating any excess heat even without a fan. Now staying in the storage section, worth mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plug. Now I do like the fact that they've been spaced out for an easier and more arranged access I want to say. Export wise we have four PCIe slots, two bachelors and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only four lanes, so not really suited for GPU intensive tasks. And obviously, as of today, we do not yet have a video card who can take full advantage of PCIe 4.0 level bandwidth, but it's still a great feature in terms of future proofing. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of a padded back IO plate, which is rather a premium and welcome feature. Now starting from the left, we have our CPU flashback button for a CPU less bias recovery or update, which is a premium feature at that price level. I think the first time I see it on a Tomahawk motherboard. A PS2 connector, a couple of second generation USB plugs, our Wi-Fi 6 dual band with transfer speed going up to 2.4 gigabit per second, which is quite the upgrade when compared to the previous generation of this board. Two 5 gigabit USB plugs, an HDMI 1.4 display output, which uh, this is maybe my only critique on this board, makes absolutely no sense in terms of utility because it is capped at 4K uh, slash 24 frames per second and the next generation of, of Ryzen processors or Renoir uh, codename processors will be able to provide APUs which will far surpass the standard so next time MSI either remove it completely or give us something a little bit more beefier like HDMI 2.0 four 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, our 2.5 gigabit LAN, again, quite an upgrade when compared to previous generation of motherboards, which were capped at one gigabit. Very, very happy to see it finally evolve. And finally, we got our eight-channel ALC1220 audio codec, which despite being a mid-range codec, really takes advantage of the six PCB layer, since uh, both left and right audio channel have been traced on individual PCB layer, which obviously will add to the static ISO of our board. Now moving on to our front panel connectors. We have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring PSU and all-in-one water coolers, two five gigabit third generation plugs and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector which in all and for all is pure and distilled luxury at this price level. Cooling wise we have six PWM fans including a single dedicated water pump. Obviously this is more than enough to have a solid air flow in your build and you can even hope to operate a single custom water cooling system uh, in your computer based on this motherboard and that's great I do regret the fact that we don't have hybrid connectors as usual as uh, as feature on the 
gigabyte motherboards but other than this this is more or less what you should uh, expect and what you get for 200 bucks troubleshooting wise we got our easy debugger to guide us through the booting process which again is what i expected on a pcie 4.0 enabled motherboard but obviously all of this engineering skills and vrm and and processors would be nothing mean nothing without the galore of rgb connectors left and right on a gaming's board starting with a lead strip nested in the board's pcb and four rgb connectors scattered over our board including two addressable ones in short if you ever wanted your build to produce enough light to shine on the obscurities of your insecurities now it can in conclusion, the MSI MAG X570 Tomahawk Wi-Fi will cost you around 210 bucks before taxes. And MSI has set itself the goal to turn around its catastrophic X570 early launch with the Unify and the Tomahawk. And it really shies at nothing to achieve the goal. The result is not one, but the best motherboard available on the market at that price tag. The VRM is ridiculously powerful and efficient, shamelessly going after some of the most expensive boards on the market, such as a ROG Crosshair 8 Extreme. It shows a real manufacturing logic with definite maturity since the Edge or Carbon series. But most importantly, the Tomahawk shows that MSI has learned its lesson. It it can't anymore dump some Quack. boards over the market hoping that its fan base is just gonna buy without asking any questions. And that is good. That is really, really good. And in a nutshell, if you are a first time builder or a heavy gamer, and even an enthusiast overclocker, may I dare say, at 200 bucks, it's a no brainer. There's nowhere else your money deserves, needs, and wants to be.